The last 20 years, I've been just appalled at what I have been hearing and reading in the papers and so on about this uh, human-induced global warming. It comes a lot from the climate models, and most of the modelers don't have much background in how the atmosphere ticks. They never asked me or a lot of my colleagues out there that have had a lot of experience about this whole global warming, uh, human-induced global warming business. We just weren't asked. I've been 50 years working hard down in the trenches, and uh, the IPCC never asked me to join them or do anything with them. It, it's sort of like the field of meteorology and climatology has been hijacked by these modelers. I don't doubt that human-induced global uh, uh, warming through greenhouse gas isn't there. It's there, but it's quite small compared to what they're saying. I don't doubt that land use, that uh, Pelkey and, uh, is saying the different type of land use can control this. I don't doubt that the solar effects are there. Those are three effects there, but in my view, they're smaller, generally smaller, and they're in the noise level, and we can't isolate them well and tell what they are. But this ocean thing is really, in a magnitude, why, uh, in my view, more important than those. Since 1995, this Atlantic thermohaline circulation has been going faster and with a lag of 10, 12, 15 years. We should begin to see cooling coming on. I'm willing to make a big financial bet on this. That uh, in, ten, uh, in 10 years, I expect the globe to be somewhat cooler than it is now because this ocean effect will dominate over the human-induced CO2 effect, and I believe the solar effect and the land use effect. According to my estimate, everything else held constant. If we double CO2, we're supposed to change thing about 4.2 watts per square meter. If you figure that the last uh, 33 years, we should have had a warming of the globe about uh, 0.14. We've had more warming than that. There must be other things involved besides CO2. Now, how do we get into this mess? My belief is we've had the ascendancy of the religion of numerical modeling and the loss of meteorological judgment in reality. Um, this is what's happened. There are real weather people in the world, and they make forecasts, and they are always wrong to some extent every day. But they verify their forecasts. Now, since the development of the computer, of course, any new technology has people that abuse it. And what we have allowed is that we've developed a uh, a group of people that come in and model, and um, they're not beholding to reality. But they say, believe me, in a hundred years, but I don't want to tell you what it's going to be in the next few years. In me, that's ridiculous. Now, the atmosphere is too complex to be modeled very far. There is, I've been quite impressed with numerical prediction out to a week or two. But after a while, other processes come in and you don't know those and you go out into the world of butterflies or the world of chaos. And that's, they're all operating in a world of chaos and telling us this. It, uh, I, I just can't believe. Now there's other, th the, for instance, the system is too complex to be modeled. They have their water vapor feedback loop wrong. 
and they don't take in the deep ocean circulation. They have other problems. They have viscosity. They've got to make their viscosity and their models too high unless it blows up. There's numerical problems. The models drift and they got to bring them back. There's a hundred things wrong with these damn models. <laughs> and um, here's a good statement made in 1934. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiment and they wander through equation after equation and build a structure that has no reality to, uh, no uh, relation to reality. I think that's what we're seeing with these global models. They are essentially uh, <laughs> bow down to their their God, which is a computer. They live in a world all their own, and they're telling us what we've got to do, but of course it's in their interest to do that, because the more they can convince us that they're right, the more funds they can get, the more powerful they go to meetings and stretch lemos and all these things, and it's a high-level thing. What the models do, they assume CO2 doubles. We all know if it doubles and you keep everything the same, the globe should warm about one degree C. But then they have the feedback of the water vapor and other things. Albedo, they don't change that apparently. So they have about a two degree feedback. So they get a warming of about three degrees. Now it's my feeling and others that what we have, yes, we'll have a doubling of CO2 of one degree, but the feedback won't be there. As you get, uh, as we have seen the upper layers, the rainfall efficiency as you get more convection is such that you take mass up and you must have a replacement of mass down and sinking motion dries and you don't moisten the upper levels. As a matter of fact, the data shows that the, as uh, in the last 20 years, 25 years, the middle level moisture has actually been going down. We don't have this feedback. This feedback is probably negative. We're doing work now to show that uh, when you get more rain, the albedo goes up and uh, so it's my idea, yes, we double CO2, we should have a global warming maybe half a degree or so. Nothing like the two to five degrees they're talking about. Thank you.